Welcome to A level and AP physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss an important and tricky question on nuclear physics from October November 2021, paper 4, variant 2. In this question, we will discuss what is meant by random decay and what is meant by spontaneous decay. We will also discuss how to calculate decay constant if the graph between natural log of A means natural log of activity against time is given and how we can determine the half-life. We will also explore how to determine the nuclear number of radioactive nuclei if the mass of the sample is given. So it's some very important concepts we're going to discuss in today's lesson. For part A, it is given to us radioactive decay is random and spontaneous. Question is asking us to state what is meant by random and what is meant by spontaneous. This is very common type of question and you will see this one in many past papers. So you need to be very clear what is meant by random. I mean how to state what is meant by random and how to state what is meant by spontaneous. Let's try to understand first of all what is meant by random. If we look at this sample, we have many nuclei in this sample. A random simply means that we cannot predict which nuclei will decay next and when it will decay. So that is simply what is meant by random. So random, I can say it is difficult to predict which nuclei will decay next and when it will decay. So which and when, it cannot be predicted. But each nucleus has constant probability. So simply we can say each nucleus has constant probability to decay per unit time. Constant probability per unit time. So we can also write down constant probability per unit time. And constant probability per unit time are simply probability per unit time. This is called decay constant. So decay constant is same for each individual nucleus. Let's try to understand spontaneous. Spontaneous simply means that nuclear decay, it does not depend on external factors. Means it does not depend on temperature, it does not depend on pressure. For example, if you look at chemical reaction, we can increase the rate of chemical reactions or we can decrease by changing external factors. But nuclear reaction means the nuclear decay, rate of nuclear decay cannot be increased or decreased by changing temperature or by changing other factors such as pressure. So that is what is meant by spontaneous. Now, let me explain to you how we can write down the answer for this part. This is how you need to write down answer. So as you can see here, I have written here, it is not possible to predict when an individual nucleus will decay and constant probability of decay of an individual nucleus per unit time. For spontaneous decay, simply you can say radioactive decay is independent of external factors such as temperature, pressure and neighboring nuclei as well means if one nucleus is here for example it does not depend on the neighboring nucleus it doesn't matter wherever it is in the sample it will decay when it's time to decay will come so this is what is meant by spontaneous for part B, it is given to us a sample of radioactive material contains atoms of an unstable nuclide X. And the activity of the sample is given, that is A. And the graph between ln of A means ln of activity and time is given. Question is asking us to determine half-life. And our answer has to be in minutes because you can see the unit is here in minutes. Now the problem is that the graph is given between ln of a and time. If the graph was between activity and time, we can determine half-life directly from this graph. Now it is between ln of a and time, so we cannot determine half-life directly from the graph. And the second way we have to determine half-life, this is half-life is equal to ln of 2 divided by decay constant. But ln of 2 is a constant and this is equal to 0.69 theory so this is a constant number so and this is divided by lambda 
Now, if we can get value of lambda from the graph, then we can determine the half-life. So let's try to figure out how we can determine decay constant from this graph. You can see here we have activity on y-axis and time on x-axis. So we can start from here. The activity as a function of time, we can say a is equal to a naught e to the power of negative lambda t. If we take log on both sides means natural log on both sides we can simply say this is log of a naught plus log of e to the power of negative lambda t log of e is equal to one so log of e is equal to one so this is one point you need to understand so simply we can say log of a this is equal to log of a naught minus lambda t. Now simply we need to compare this one with straight line equation to determine value of lambda. First of all, let's try to rewrite this one in a little bit different form so it will be easy for us to compare this with straight line equation. So simply I can write down in this form. Now let's write down straight line equation y is equal to mx plus c now in this case simply you can see ln of a this is equal to y and m is equal to negative of lambda and the y intercept is equal to ln of a naught we need to find lambda so we can write down the gradient means m is the gradient this is equal to negative of lambda or simply we can say lambda is equal to negative of gradient so this is equal to negative of gradient and so here we can say lambda is equal to we can take these two points one this point and one this one and this point the value is 36.4 and this is 35 so simply we can write down Lambda is equal to 36.4, 35.0 divided by 20 minus 0. And we can find a value of lambda. And lambda in this case will be equal to 0 0.07 per minute. So this is value of lambda, 0 0.07 per minute. Or simply you can say 0 0.07 per minute. So let me rewrite. This is 0 0.07 per minute. Now we have value of lambda. So half-life simply we can write down. T half, half-life. This will be equal to ln of 2 divided by lambda. Now simply we need to plug in values. Ln of 2 is equal to 0.693 divided by 0 0.07. Seven, and we can get the value of half-life. So I will be writing here half-life. If we solve this one, we will get answer here. And that answer I'm writing here. So the half-life, we can simply say T half, in this case, will be equal to 10 minutes. So this is our final answer. So simply we can write down here 10. And this is final answer. This question has three marks the first mark is if you have written this point and this is c1 mark you will get first mark and the second mark is if you have got the right value of lambda you will get second mark and the third mark is answer mark if you have got the right answer you will get third mark for the second part it is given to us at time t is equal to zero the mass of the atoms of x in the sample is 5.66 times 10 to negative 7 kgs we need to determine the nucleon number of x but we have to be very clear this is the mass of x at time t is equal to zero the mass of x will decrease with time because nuclei of x will decay so this is very important point we need to consider now question is that how we can determine nucleon number in order to determine nuclear number if we can find out the number of nuclei I mean we can use number of nuclei to determine the mass of one nucleus nucleon number of nuclei simply we can find out the total mass of the sample divided by mass of single nucleus so we can say this is mass of nucleus single nucleus capital m is the mass of 
sample and this one we can also write down we can mass of one nucleus we can say its mass number or we can say nuclear number times u now if we have n then we can find out a so the question is asking us to find a so now let's try to find out first of all n means the number of nuclei in order to find number of nuclei we can use a is equal to lambda n and lambda we have already calculated now n we can calculate if we have value of a and this has to be a initial so this will be n initial initial number of nuclei but in the question means from the graph we can find out that ln of a naught from here we can find out that is equal to 36.4 we need a naught from here so if we raise this to the power of e we can say this is e to the power of ln a naught so this also has to be e to the power of 36.4 we can cancel e with ln so simply we can write down a naught is equal to e to the power of 36.4 and value of lambda already we have that was equal to 0 0.07 per minute so this is unit is very important per minute so if we need to write down this one per second we have to divide this by 60 so if we solve this one our answer will be in per second means lambda will be in per second and now simply we have to use this one to determine nucleon number so simply we can write on here i will rewrite this formula a naught is equal to lambda n and now we can plug in values so a naught is e to the power of 36.4 and lambda is equal to 0 0.07 divided by 60 and then we have n n is m this is m so i can write down here this is capital m divided by a times u we can also plug in values of m so this is 0 0.07 divided by 60 and the mass of the sample is 5.66 times 10 to negative 7 and this is divided by a this is what we need to find out and u one u we need to understand is equal to 1.66 times 10 to negative 27 kg and this is one amu atomic mass unit and this is given in data so we can simply write on its value 1.66 times 10 to negative 27 so we have to solve this one for a so simply you can plug in values this is e to the power of 36.4 this is in your calculator this is given so you can use e to the power of this and you can solve this one for a a here is the mass number this is not the activity or we can say this is nucleon number if we solve for a our nuclear number will be 62 and this is the final answer and so simply we can write down here this is 62 this question has three marks the first mark you will get if you have written this this formula means this equation you will get first c mark and the second c mark you will get if you have written this one I means you have written n is equal to mass of the sample divided by nuclear number times u you will get the second mark and the last mark is a mark if you have got the right answer you will get this mark and that's all what you need to understand about this question